Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, a very good morning to you and a, a very warm welcome to our benefit service here at Holy Trinity. And particularly, if you are watching online, you are also incredibly, incredibly welcome. It's so wonderful to see so many of you looking so beautifully tanned and enjoying the, the warm weather that we've been given on our bank holiday weekend. And we are incredibly grateful for, for Sam, who will be playing on our behalf this morning, and for Bon, who will also be singing on our behalf with, with David. So thank you so much for your part in our service. We come to our first hymn, which is the Lord of I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. And as you know, if you're at home, you can sing away to your heart's content. But for those of us who are here, let's use it as an opportunity at the start of our service to, to close our eyes and to give to God all the things that we have in our hearts and our minds, all the things that have happened to us this week, to give God thanks for the good things and to give to him the things that perhaps haven't gone as well as we would have liked. So let's worship God together. I, the Lord of sea and sky.
And so we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. We have too often exchanged the worship of, of the living God for the idols of our own imagining. And as we gather to offer our praise to the holy and undivided Trinity and to worship him in spirit and truth, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand as we say the Gloria together, which you could find on page, page five of your service booklet. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people, people on earth. Lord God, heavenly Amen. King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that this congregation of Holy Trinity may be creative, may bring, be full of forgiveness, and may bring light and life to those around us. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please do be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet and with the two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, 
I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For if you did not receive a spirit of did you not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. And there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one else can do these signs apart from one who comes from the presence of God. Jesus, Jesus answered him very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. Yet we do not receive, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent, the serpents in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, as we gather here on this beautiful summer morning, we pray that you would again speak to our hearts and refresh our minds and our hearts and our souls with something from your word that will sustain us in the days and weeks and months ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. Please be seated. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It's wonderful to, for me to be sharing with you on Trinity Sunday. Um, and I have a slight confession to make. The first is that I have forgotten to bring the prop that I intended to bring with me to illustrate a point. Um, but when I first read that I was leading Trans Trinity Sunday, I misread the calendar completely. And I didn't read Trinity. Instead, I read uh, Trifle. And I brought a trifle with me. I, or I had intended to bring a trifle with me. And I prepared a wonderfully elaborate sermon on God the sponge, God the custard, and God the wobbly jelly. But unfortunately, and I'm sure you'll be delighted to hear, that that has been condemned to the confines of my journal, never to be ever used again. But as analogies go, there is not one that I have come across um, that does the, just, does the Trinity justice. Um, I have a library full of stories and all sorts of things, and it's really interesting that nobody seems prepared to find an analogy or a wonderful story that tackles the Trinity, uh, and I, which is hardly surprising. So it's interesting, isn't it, then, that when we look at our readings this morning, including our psalm, none of them seek to give us a definition of what the Trinity is. Instead, they seem to be a collection of elaborate personal descriptions about God or who or what God is like, and which begs the question in my mind as to why have they chosen to do that. So the title of what I want to show you this morning is called, What Does It Mean to Be a Believer? Because being a believer requires more than just knowledge, which Nicodemus had. It has to be based on something. But what is that? And as we heard from Eddie last Sunday, for the, uh, for the gospel to have spread beyond Jerusalem at Pentecost, it had to be based on more than hearsay. And I think the key is in what it means to be a believer. The Nobel Prize winning psychologist Daniel Kahneman in his absolutely fantastic book, which I recommend to you, it's called Thinking Fast and Slow, talked about the human mind as having two systems. The first is, he calls it system one, and it is where it's intuitive and it's effortless. System two requires, on our part, conscious, deliberate and effortless calculations. Essentially, they describe for us the process behind having a belief and being a believer. System one is about going with our experiences and placing our trust in something because we see something that perhaps no one else sees. Perhaps that's the reason why so many of us are in church this morning, because we've seen something perhaps that is bigger than ourselves. System two is slower and it's about gathering hard facts and knowledge in order to make a decision. All of this helps us, I think, when we come to think about the Trinity because we all have, in terms of knowledge and evidence, we have three statements which, as a church, we can, we can say are true. That God is three persons. Each one is fully God. And there is one God. However theologically sound those statements may be, somehow they don't kind of stack up with the kind of language that Isaiah is using or the words of our psalm, or what Paul writes in Romans. Something more, I think, is required. Something more than the knowledge of three statements. So the New Testament then defines a believer as someone who has a conviction, a respect for God and his word, that springs from a relationship with him. And suddenly we can see a different way, a third way. We can see where Isaiah, Paul in Romans, and the writer of Psalm 29 are coming from. They're not using system two to work out and find evidence for the existence of God. 
they're using system one. Because all of them start trying to express, don't they, what God looks like. And then suddenly, I don't know if you've noticed, when you look at the readings, they stop. Isaiah says, I saw, I heard, and I said. The writer of our psalm starts by saying, God is like, God is this, God is that. And in the end, I think at the end, he gives up. And he says, I saw God enthroned on heaven on high. Paul starts talking about being born of spirit and lots of other wonderful things. And then suddenly he gives up. And later on in the passage, he, he says it comes down to nothing else but love itself. Nothing on earth can separate us from the love of God. They're writing about something that they have experienced by intuition. That they have seen something in the world around them that when they've encountered Christ, suddenly it makes sense. I don't know if you, I don't know how many of you were with us last Sunday evening. I know some of you were for our Zoom service at Pentecost. And one of the things that struck me later on in the week was when I looked at the slides afterwards was how each and every one of the artists in the slides were all depicting Pentecost. But what struck me was how they all painted the same thing, but in a completely different way. Because they were express, expressing something of God that they had found for themselves. And that is what Jesus is saying to Nicodemus in our reading from John. He's saying to this Jewish scholar, you've got the knowledge. But what you need to enter the kingdom of heaven is an encounter. You can describe God to me in a knowledge way. In, in by what you know but what have you encountered to enter the kingdom of God you need an encounter go back and read Isaiah 6 or Psalm 29 Jesus is not trying to define the Trinity as Father, Son and Holy Spirit he's showing us the way to a deeper relationship with him and this is what it means to be truly born again two men are in a pub and they're watching the 10 o'clock news when a story comes up on the television in the corner of the pub about uh, a person who is, about, who is about to throw themselves off the 20th floor of the skyscraper at Canary Wharf, and one said to the other, said, I bet you £10 that the, the guy doesn't jump. That's fair to me. It's a bet, says his mate. A few minutes later, the guy jumps, and the loser hands over the £10 note. He's like, I can't take your money. I saw him jump earlier on the 6 o'clock news. <laughs> Me too, said the friend, but I didn't think he'd do it twice. <laughs> what we experience changes us. We behave differently when we have seen something, not, with, not just with our physical eyes, but with the eyes of our heart. And that is why we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, and I think he's saying it to us all, use the knowledge you have, but go with your intuition. Go with what you've seen with the eyes of your heart. It is truly possible to see the Lord, to see God in this life, even if you can't see him with your natural eyes. That's why it's by intuition that we say, Abba, Father, as David reminded us a few seconds ago, because we recognise who we are, and we recognise, at least in part, who God is. And it's only through that recognition and that encounter that we can do things like the Isle of uh, Wedmore Good Neighbours Scheme, things like Little Lambs and all the wonderful things that we do in our communities. As I come to a close, Trinity Sunday is not a day for trying to work out the great mystery of who God is or trying to identify the sum of his parts and figure it out or coming up with elaborate trifle-based analogies because there would never be a day to do that. We can guess how God works, but we can never really truly know. God is what God is. He will be what he will be. But Trinity Sunday is a day for us to reflect on what it means for us to be a believer. It is a day to reflect again on our own personal faith. How did we find God? What does that mean to us? To reflect on what, what it was that we saw as Isaiah reflected on what he saw. What our psalm writer reflected upon what they saw. To reflect upon the God that we have encountered personally. What does that mean to me to know Jesus Christ? To, do, to reflect on what, on that which is indescribable and how it has changed our lives. Because 
we do not need to understand the Trinity. We just need to accept in our hearts that God so loved the world enough that he sent his only son to die for us. And that nothing in all creation, not death, not life, not pain or hardship, can separate us from his love. And we need to accept that by faith in Christ, we can step into another encounter, like the one Jesus described to Nicodemus, that will change our lives and the world forever. Because to be a believer means to have an encounter with a truly awesome and indescribable God. Amen. Let us stand together and face the cross and say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sakes he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right, right hand of the Father. He, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living the and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We, we believe in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the, the giver of life, who, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. On Trinity Sunday, we pray to God our Father, as you bring light into darkness and hope to our world. To your Son, Jesus, bringing comfort to all those who suffer. And the Holy Spirit, bringing joy to our hearts, and everyday miracles of change into our world. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. we pray for those who lead our church, Bishop Ruth, our local church and clergy, Richard, Sam, and Michael, and those in our local church family who support to work and lead our worship. Strengthen them, their families, and all your church in the service of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. On Trinity Sunday, we pray for all who work for peace and unity, for all world leaders, new and old, and that they seek an end to the suffering caused by war, violence, injustice, inequality, disease, prejudice, poverty, and hopelessness, that they may bring healing to the world. Bless, guide, and give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that all people may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. As our lives become less restricted, we think about the effects of the pandemic 
is having on so many people. We pray for young children struggling with the effort for their young lives of social isolation, interrupted education, and concern about their future. For teachers, counsellors, and those working in children's mental health services. For adults of all ages coping with loss of employment, bereavement, loneliness, ill health, lack of confidence, and anxiety. For families struggling with conflict, worry, and the demands of daily life. For ourselves, that we may be watchful for those in distress and be prepared to lend a listening ear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Comfort and heal all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We hold before you Margaret Gelder, Bishop Peter, Marion Pignall, Lisa Hall, Pauline Last, Michael Redman, and the others for whom we've been asked to pray, Jamie Cotton, Zoe Wilson, Millie Dyer, Anne Dyer, Ruth Dyer, Alistair Cree, Austin Ludlow, Sue Darley, Sheila Hall. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Everlasting Trinity, we pray for ourselves as we go from this church today to start the week ahead. We ask that in all we do, we may walk more closely with you at our side, safe in the knowledge that your love and care knows no bounds. Let there be peace and respect for the people of the earth, love in our lives, delight in the good, forgiveness of past wrongs, and from now a new start. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please, can you stand? Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. And do look around, do give a wave, do share a sign of peace with each other. Someone in your own household, uh, and obviously those at home do share a sign of peace with those with whom you're watching. Well, during uh, the next hymn is our uh, offertory hymn. I'm going to put the collection plate out here. And folks, if you in church feel you are okay to come and bring your offering during this hymn, uh, we uh, have a, a one-way system here. Uh, most the other churches are probably used to something similar down the central aisle and then round back the side aisles. And similarly, when we come to share communion together, do feel that you can come down the side, the, the central aisle um, to the front and then back down the side aisles then. So, uh, our tree hymn is, Father, we love you, we worship and adore you.
Blessed be God who feeds the hungry, who raises the poor, who fills our praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, holy and undivided Trinity, because you have given us the light of the knowledge of God in the face of Jesus Christ, that we may grow into your likeness and be changed from glory to glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy word, this, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand in all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to come under your roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. David, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life.
energy and the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Jane, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Andrew, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Oh, bless you, thank you, that be really is. Johnny, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Jane, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Tom, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Heather, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Suzanne, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Sue, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Corin, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. See, the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Feel the body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please do be seated.
Well, first of all, a, a reason to celebrate or to uh, acknowledge people who will be celebrating uh, on Tuesday, so the 1st of June, Eric and Nancy Kingston, who live just up the road uh, in uh, Church Lane, will be celebrating their 81st wedding anniversary. Uh, and uh, I think Sam will be, I'll, I'm, I'll be away for a few days, Sam, I'll, I'll pop around and see them after this service and Sam We'll go around and give our congratulations on Tuesday, but that's quite an achievement, isn't it? Amazing. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful couple. Um, and um, I think it's a week on Monday that the work to the driveway starts. Is that right, David? So uh, at long last, we'll be able to uh, look forward to um, getting into Holy Trinity um, without having to stumble up uh, 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 the pathway um, and, and wonder, um, uh, particularly at night time, uh, that actually uh, the, the driveway is going to be uh, resurfaced, uh, there'll be lights put on, and the surface around the sort of the, the, the curtain uh, of the church as well. So uh, getting in and out of the building will be much, much easier. And we've been planning for this for a while. And thank you so much to David for, for getting it to this stage. So John Beddingfield, uh, local uh, our local builder will be doing that work. Next week, we are starting our sermon series uh, based on the book of Nehemiah. We'll be using the book of Nehemiah from the Old Testament to help us think about uh, coming back, if you like, sort of returning after our own exile uh, and uh, how it is to be uh, God's people now in this place. And uh, I don't know. What might we need to be, to uh, be and to do as we go forward together? So uh, over the course of June and, and into July, uh, there'll be five sermons. Uh, there won't be at every church every Sunday, uh, but of course the glories of being uh, uh, able to record things means that you'll be able to access uh, every sermon, watch it uh, online afterwards if you weren't able to be in a church where one was being given. And there'll be some questions that will come out with each, with each sermon uh, to help either you as an individual think uh, and reflect, or maybe if you're part of one of our home groups, uh, we'll be doing that in those. Don't think there are any other notices I need to give out. Does anyone here have anything they need to say? Uh, Allerton folk. Uh, thank you for yesterday, the plant and cake sale. Do we have any idea yet how, how well we did? Uh, it was a, 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 a wonderful community day, uh, and thank you to all who uh, organised that. I'm sure... Uh, sorry? We, there were a lot of new, new, new folk who'd moved into the village uh, over the last year, and it was probably the first opportunity for people to come out and uh, see others in a community context. So it was a great morning. Thank you. <laughs> well, our final hymn then, uh, particularly as uh, uh, Trinity Sunday being this church's name day is Lord for the Years. Sad 
God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you love and for whom you care and remain with you always. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.